If your CPU is running too hot, you're losing performance, shortening its lifespan, and probably hearing your fans go crazy. But don't worry, today we're gonna break down the best CPU coolers for the 5800X 3D. I'll show you the top air coolers and liquid AIO coolers that I recommend, real world temperatures, and what to consider when identifying the best cooler for your setup. Drop a comment below on what CPU and cooler you're using and what you're considering for your new build. Before we get into recommendations, let's talk about why cooling is so important and the difference between air versus liquid cooling. Every CPU has TDP, or thermal design power. This is how much heat your CPU is expected to generate under load, measured in watts. For example, the 5800X 3D has TDP of 105 watts, but when fully loaded, it can spike to over 120 watts. Watts. If your cooler can't handle the heat, your CPU will throttle, meaning it lowers its performance to prevent overheating. And trust me, that's the last thing you want when you're gaming or rendering videos. Stock coolers are better than nothing, but they're often too small, too loud, and don't handle the high temperatures well. All right, let's get started with air coolers. Each cooler has its pros and cons, and here are the top choices for the 5800X 3D. First up is the Noctua NHD15, and it's considered the king of air coolers, and is what most people benchmark coolers to. Noctua is known for offering excellent customer service, and pays attention not only to the noise level of the cooler, but the tone of the cooler as well, which can make a difference if you're looking for a cooler you never noticed, or that is pleasant when it does have to pick up the pace. However, this cooler is one of the larger coolers and it comes at a premium price, so you have to make sure it'll fit in both your build and budget. This cooler uses two 150mm fans on a dual heatsink setup, but let's see how this cooler performs on the 5800X 3D. At the lower watt levels, the Noctua NHD15 G2 does noticeably better than the average cooler. As we increase the watts to 105, we can see that this advantage widens relative to the average cooler. However, this cooler does produce more noise at the higher percent speeds due to the larger fan size. As you increase the watts to overclock levels, we can see that this cooler keeps the 5800X 3D at comfortable temperatures while the average cooler cannot. Next up is the Noctua NHU-12A and has some of the perks of the NHD-15 but comes in a smaller package and is easier to install. This cooler uses two 120mm fans and a large monolithic heatsink. Of the coolers shown, this cooler is one of my favorite coolers due to its compact design but larger cooling performance, making it ideal for some micro setups. Now let's dig into the performance on the 5800X 3D. At the lower heat levels, the Noctua U12A has similar performance as the average cooler. However, this cooler begins to shine as we increase the watt levels, staying noticeably below the average cooler. Additionally, this cooler has similar noise profile as the average cooler. As we increase the watts to overclock levels, we can see that this cooler can keep the 5800X 3D just cool enough. Next up is the Thermite Phantom Spirit 120. This cooler is one of the more popular coolers because it is one of the best value coolers currently on the market. This cooler has two 120mm fans on a dual heatsink setup and is offered at an attractive price point. Let's take a look at how well it cools the 5800X 3D. At the lower power levels, the Phantom Spirit keeps the CPU noticeably cooler across the board than your average cooler. As you increase the power, we can see that the Phantom Spirit continues to outperform most other coolers. Additionally, the Phantom Spirit has below average noise levels at comparable speeds relative to your average cooler. When we increase the heat to overclock levels, we can see that this cooler can manage the higher power levels. So if you want a quiet air-cooled setup, either of these options are excellent choices. But what if you want something sleeker with great thermals? Let's talk about AIOs. AIOs, or all-in-one liquid coolers, are great for overclocking and aesthetics. Here are my top picks of the coolers I've reviewed. The first AIO cooler is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360. This cooler is set at an affordable price and offers excellent cooling. However, this cooler has been known to offer some challenges when mounting the AIO mount, but based upon all the coolers I've reviewed, this isn't a reason to shy away from this cooler. This cooler has both RGB and non-RGB versions, so you can find the right setup to fit your build. However, this does have a larger footprint than the average air coolers. Let's take a look in terms of how well it does cooling the 5800X 3D. At the lower power levels, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 provides superior cooling across the board. As the heat increases, we can see that this gap materially widens across the board. However, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 is noticeably louder across all percent fan speeds, which is primarily due to the pump being set at 100% speed for my testing, which can be reduced to lower the noise levels. When we continue to increase the heat levels, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 keeps the 5800X 3D at comfortable levels. Next up is the Corsair IQ H150i Elite Capilex XT. This cooler is a premium cooler, and it shows with the unique and modern design of the cooler. It offers excellent cooling, but it takes a larger footprint in your PC. A downside to the Corsair is that they require you to use their software to manage the AIO. Let's see if it performs as good as it looks. At the lower heat levels, the Corsair provides above average cooling at idle levels. As the heat rises, we can see the Corsair IQ H150i begins to shine as this cooler provides excellent cooling across the board with noise levels comparable to the average cooler. As we increase the temps to overclock levels, we can see that the Corsair can handle the heat. In terms of air versus AIOs, top modern air coolers can perform just as well as some AIOs, 
with that in mind, the choice to go AIO is one more based on looks than cooling necessity. However, while AIOs give a clean look, you can expect air coolers to last longer and cheaper to fix if something does go wrong. But before you buy a cooler, here's some key installation tips. Check to make sure you have RAM clearance. The NHD15 in the fan sphere may cover your RAM sticks, while the fans on these coolers can be slightly lifted over the RAM and still perform well. It will hide the RGB on the RAM sticks if you go that route. Second, make sure to mount the AIO radiator at the top or front of the case, not the bottom. When installing AIOs, you have to be aware where the air bubble will form in the AIO loop. This means either putting the radiator at the top or front with the tubes on the bottom side of the radiator so potential air bubbles in the loop won't impact cooling performance. Lastly, apply thermal paste correctly. While overdoing it with non-conductive thermal paste won't heavily detriment performance, putting too little will. Using a pea size or spreading the thermal paste across the CPU are good methods to make sure you have the right amount of paste. All right, so which one should you buy? Here's my final breakdown. The best overall is the Noctua NHU12A. It has power performance but comes in a compact size. However, it is pricey. The best budget cooler is the Thermorite Phantom Spirit, which has the best cooling for the price. Next is the best silent cooler. The Noctua NHD15 G2 has the best cooling performance for the noise it produces. Best for overclocking is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. Well, it has the best cooling for the cooler shown. So which one would you pick? Let me know in the comments. That's a wrap on the best CPU coolers for the 5800X3D. If you found this helpful, drop a like and subscribe.